because at the end of the day, it is a business and it should be a business. And so most people, they get into it without actually knowing how to run a business. And, and so like, there are two sides to it. There's whatever niche you're in, maybe that's wholesaling. And then there's actually knowing how to run a business. And most people have never learned how to properly do either. And then they try to like scale it and they say, oh, I want to go to multiple states. Like, okay, well, let's, let's talk about your business first. Like and bro, this is the uh, real estate podcast uh, here in Austin, Texas. You are uh, in a different area, part of the country. Appreciate you coming on, man. It means a lot. Uh, would love to get to know you. And uh, just thanks for coming on. Yeah, dude. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Let's get it, man. It's Friday. Recording the podcast. Let's have some fun. Um, we are entrepreneurial focused. We'd love to dive into your background and, and kind of hear how you got to where you're at today. Uh, as much as you want to share, you know, probably pepper you with some questions along the way and just see how we can add value for other people. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm an open book. So whatever you have to ask, I'm, I'm here to provide value. So um, I've been in real estate for five years. Um, when I started out in real estate, I was working full time in the medical device industry. So I was a medical device sales rep. Uh, great job. But I knew it wasn't what I wanted to do in long term. And so I started looking into other options, really started by looking into what investing options I had and didn't love you know, stock market or anything like that. And uh, stumbled upon real estate investing. So decided to buy some rentals and started doing some flips um, while still working full time and was fortunate enough to stumble upon wholesaling uh, because I had bought a few properties off of wholesalers and I had that's no idea I what it was. Yeah. That's, that's happened with me as well, man. It's like nobody really, you know, there's a lot of people now that talk about it, but me as a agent, no one ever explained it or what, even at all these brokerages, I had kind of have this theory that like of people that are licensed, like 5% understand wholesaling. But I just, I just throw that in there. Cause that's literally what happened to me. I was buying a few from them and I was like, wow, I'm, maybe I could do this. So anyways, yeah. keep going. Yeah. So I, I mean, that's exactly the thought that went through my head because, you know, we get to the closing table. I see how much they're making on the deal. And I think, man, if I'm just able to find out where they're finding these houses, I can pretty much double my profit on all these deals. Um, so that's, that's what I started doing. I, I started just with the basics, you know, direct mail, bandit signs, um, and just driving for dollars and started to generate some of my own leads. And the great thing about being able to find off market deals yourself is that it gives you choice. So then you can choose whether you want to flip it, whether you want to hold it, whether you want to um, sell it as a wholesale and Partner, you, you yeah. can, yeah, whatever you want and you can pick and choose. So the ones you want to keep, you keep the ones you want to sell, you sell. And no matter what, if you're keeping them, to, to flip or to, to hold, you're going to save 15, 20,000 at least on every single time you buy. Uh, can you explain what you mean by that? Yeah. So the, in the U S right now, the, the average wholesale fee is it's like 16, five right now. So 16,500. So if instead of you buying it from a wholesaler and you're paying their fee. If you're buying it directly from the homeowner, you're saving that fee. Right. Makes sense. And so, you know, as long as you have the ability to find the house, negotiate as well as they could, then you're going to be able to get that same price. And so every single time you buy a property, you're going to be able to save at least 15,000. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. That makes sense. We, we approach things the same way with keep all options open at all times, whenever you have something under contract. And that's one of the things that I think has set our brokerage apart is we promote that as real estate brokers and agents. Um, so I never heard that average uh, wholesale fee. I would have guessed it was 10, but that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, in some places it can be lower um, in more rural or less densely populated areas. In some places like you know, New York city area or San Francisco. I mean, you can get like the average fee of like 70, 
75 thousand yeah. or so what's the biggest um, wholesale fee you've ever heard of or, or seen someone do oh easy six figures um uh, yeah i mean especially so single family houses uh, i see people do six figure deals all the time mm -hmm. um if you start getting into bigger deals like mobile home parks or apartment complexes or storage units like anything like that then yeah they can be really yeah. hefty yeah, yeah that's cool okay so you were doing the medical device you started learning about wholesale and started doing bandit signs what what happens next and so i i took a full year of doing both full time i mean when i was doing the flips myself so i was there on nights and weekends and um i'm very grateful that i had a very at this time now she's my wife at that time she was my girlfriend so she was very patient and understanding with me to to be spending that extra time um, away but took a full year uh, so i didn't just jump right into it um but i did leave a really good job to do it and so uh i knew that i wanted to be working for myself i, I wanted to have that control i wanted to have uh my own thing i wanted to be an entrepreneur. And so um, I started, started growing, uh, got a crew, you know, I think we had like six or seven regular guys doing all of our jobs. Uh, we, you know, we started using the Burr method. You, so bought it cheap, rehabbed it, rented it out, refinanced it, pulled some cash out, um, you know, cash flowed it, and then repeat. continued that process again. Yep. Repeat. Um, did that was doing some flips doing a little bit of wholesaling uh, but i didn't really like wholesaling that much honestly um because i didn't I, I didn't have a great process to it yeah so uh i always felt like it was a little uncomfortable a little awkward for for the sellers because my explanation of how i was bringing these other people through wasn't really very good and it just wasn't systematized yeah so it was always a little clunky we, that, that's a good, just to touch on that. Like we have a pretty decent sized wholesale company here. Uh, I have three different partners and we got cold callers and I agree. And it's interesting because um, personally, I was lucky to find the right people that did different things with the business, but to do everything as a wholesaler, I, I'm, I'm, you know, diving into like what you're alluding to is like, that's a lot of moving parts. And that's the whole thing, what you said with no system, it is yeah. tough to be the acquisitions, dispositions, marketing, accounting, whatever. Um, so I, I agree with you completely. Like if you, you got to have that system and I've only seen it work with just having more of the right people. Cause there's so many moving parts. Um, I guess if you, you could own it all and like, just be a really good manager, but I just found it through partners, but I, I definitely agree with what you're saying there. Yeah. I mean, so I think you definitely can do it yourself, but it's, it's going to be a lot of work and it's going to be difficult it's going to be really difficult unless it's systematized right so like my business my wholesaling business now compared to what it was then completely different i would barely say it was a business back then right uh, but now it's actually like we use one operating system um, it is a true business we have our business processes that we follow we track everything so it's very much a business now nice. um and so that's made a huge difference for us because if you're if you don't have it systematized you're just guessing all the time yeah you know if you're not tracking things if you're not tracking those key numbers that's going to tell you the health of a, your entire business or a department or a marketing strategy you're just guessing and the one of the last things i want to guess with is my money yeah so if i'm spending money on cold calling or tv ads or direct mail I don't want to be guessing. Right. I want to know that it's working or know what I should turn up and what I should turn down. I think that's, you know, that's one of the mistakes I see is a lot of people ignore looking at their numbers because they don't really want to know, you know, people like their finances, they're like, they think they have a general idea, but in reality, if you ask them specifically, what's your cost per deal? What's your cost per lead? What's your actual average fee? Like they don't know, they'll right. give you a range. Right. Um, cause they don't really want to know, but one thing I've learned around that area is that ignorance is not bliss. It is danger. And so you got to get to know those numbers, uh, yeah. cause that's when you can really learn how to improve your business. 
And because when you scale a business, you scale everything, problems included. So if you're if you're scaling problems, now what was a thousand dollar problem is maybe now a fifty thousand dollar problem. It's a good point. You can't scale your way out of problems. They go with you. <laughs> It'll make it even worse. Yeah. Okay. Right on, man. So um, you know, to this point, I mean, is it is the wholesale your main focus? But then obviously you keep a lot of options open, right? Because like I've always valued wholesaling more of, hey, let's have like a deal finding engine. Mm -hmm. And then exactly what you said, maybe we'll wholesale, maybe we'll buy, maybe we'll partner, whatever. But wholesaling is like so important. Well, not necessarily wholesaling, but activities that wholesalers do to yeah. find deals because realtors don't do these things, which is so crazy. It's like, this is why this industry almost exists is because like realtors want to take the easy commissions, but they don't want to go door knock to find you a deal, which is really what you should be doing if you're working in your client's best interest, right? Yeah, there's that whole, so it's probably only five to 10% of the population, but they're completely underserved. And it, it's, I, I say it's that five to 10% because the 90 to 95% of homeowners who are selling their house, they don't have these big problems. So selling on the market makes the most sense for them. The people that we work with usually have some sort of a problem, like they inherited a house that they just want nothing to do with, or they're in some sort of a financial difficulty and they just can't afford to, to fix the, the leaky roof or the mold problem or something like there's something else going on in their life that is preventing them from selling the usual way, Yeah, you know, especially with COVID, like a lot of people, when we ask them, you know, we got into it and they, we got to why they're looking to sell this way. They don't want to do deal with open houses or people coming through their house. Cause they're like af afraid of those people coming through yeah. or they just don't want the hassle. Like they just want something easy, quick, simple, convenient. They don't want to pay broker fees or whatever, but that again, that's a small percentage of the population, but there is, there's a lot of money in it. And there's a lot of opportunity in it. And a lot of people miss that. And they try to take these people that are in that like 90 to 95% and convert them to a wholesale deal. It just doesn't work. You're, you're never to convince someone to sell at a wholesale price. If they have the pain, if they have the problems to justify it, then it'll make sense. But Absolutely. that's one of the things I hear so often. They'll say, well, how could I convince someone to sell at the price I need? Well, that number one, that's the wrong question. Right. You're never going to convince anyone. Like our process, what we do is almost try to convince people not to work with us, that they do have other options. Like every single time we talk to someone, we ask them, well, why not just list it? Yeah. Why not just put it on the market? You'll probably get more for it. And then they'll tell us all of the reasons why they don't want to do that. Yeah. And yeah. We, we like, we have a, a approach in, Austin, where we're at, is pretty competitive, yep. but I just learned this over time of like, because we do brokerage and because we do a few other things, we just go in there and it's to your point, Hey, Mr. Or Mrs. Homeowner, like we can literally help you with anything. We could list it. We could buy it. We could wholesale. We could lend you money. We could, you know, become a 50, 50 partner. What is it that you want? How do we help you? And your chances, that's what I like about the kind of all encompassing, like going in there as like a hybrid, you could do anything to help them is your chances of getting a deal go up versus handing them an offer and hoping that it's the best offer that they have. So yeah, I totally agree. And it's like you said, man, you're not, you're not convincing them. You just need to solve their problems. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's where a lot of people get sales wrong is that they think it's about convincing, but it's, it's really about like, fully understanding and being able to identify their core problem and then matching a solution to it right? and, and making them feel comfortable through that process where they know that you can help them yep. and they feel understood. Mm -hmm. And, and so, yeah, having those options. So it's a fine line of, of having those options because I see a lot of people just starting out and they want to get into, you know, they want a brokerage, they want to do creative financing, they want to flip, they want to wholesale, and they're trying to learn way too much at once. Yeah. Like they're trying to 
diversify before they even get really good at any one yeah. thing. Yeah. No, that's a great point. Like I I went all in on brokerage first and then these things built out of this is 15 years of yeah. you know. So you're definitely right. If you're if you're new and you have all these solutions but you don't really know what you're talking about, then you're really just confusing them. Yeah. Yeah, so it is great and and that's where you can still have those other options, but outsource those options. Mm -hmm. So like we do, we partner with real estate agents. And so I do have my real estate license. I've never used it to work with a traditional buyer or seller. Not once. I had no desire to do that. You just use it on your personal deals when you're buying most likely yep. or selling. Yep. Yep. And to get MLS access. You always and... get a commission when you're buying your, your own buyer. You know what? Uh, you... I'll just reduce the commission percentage. And Okay. This is my one thing I, this is my strategy. Maybe this will help you or maybe not. But um, like when I buy a property, let's say it's 200,000. I always get the commission Let's say it's 6,000 mm -hmm. um, because if I'm getting hard money and my down payment is 20,000, well, then I'll get a check for 6,000. So really my down payment is 14. So me personally, like I'd rather pay more and pay a little bit more in interest, but then have less cash to close. Right. And it, it's, it's cool because I've told some of our agents that and they're like, I never knew you could do that. And it's a game changer. I mean, it literally nice. can drop your down payment 30%. You know? Yeah. So, awesome. I like it. Yeah. If you do a million dollar deal, right? Like it's a $30,000 commission. That's pretty. And you, and your yeah. down payments 120 and now it's actually 90. That's pretty awesome. Makes a big difference. Yeah, for sure. I like it. Yeah. Um, yes. And, and so like sort of along those lines of the, the wholesaler realtor, like a lot of realtors think that wholesalers are the enemy and Dude. They're, they're really not like, I don't I think they understand realtors. it. No, they don't. And yeah. that's the thing. And, and a lot of them, probably half of those that think they understand it, don't. Yeah. Um, so I work with realtors all the time. I, I have two uh, realtors on my team because we want to be able to monetize all those leads that come in and be able to help those people because... Yeah you never know what kind of experience they're going to get with other people, but yeah. we, we can control the experience within our own company. So we'll, we'll get just through our own leads that we get through our wholesaling business. We'll list probably four to five houses a month, just yeah. from, just from doing that, like without even, yeah. you know, no additional marketing. And it's great because then we can help those people too. I genuinely, I don't know if it's true or not, but I almost feel like the realtors that feel that way, they're literally just jealous because um, they don't understand it. And it's like, so if you just bought the house and then you sold it the next day, it's all good, right? To them, like you can flip it. You just can't assign the contract. Like there's literally no difference if you're getting the seller what you want. Uh, you know, so, okay. So you want me to go get a loan and pay some points to then you make you feel better about me doing this. You know, you see what Pretty I'm saying? Yeah. 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 So I don't know if that's true or not, but I've gotten in debates with people about it. And I'm just like, I don't think you understand what, I don't think you get it. Like, yeah. not the, like you, you think I can, I can understand how on the surface level, when you don't really dive in, you're like, this is shady and blah, blah, blah. But you've never really worked it and been in a real life situation to see that there is a value and that's why they're accepting it. Yeah. Then you, it's hard to understand, I guess. Yeah. I think the, the misconception a lot of times is that, you know, a wholesaler is taking advantage of the homeowner and, you know, getting them at this rock bottom price where we're basically stealing the house. But in reality, when we work with these homeowners and we can solve their problem, they're so grateful. Like they're so appreciative because when their life gets to that point where they need to sell their house that way, they're not thinking about money they're thinking about solving their problem. Mm. And so we can solve their problem for them. And we just happen to do that by buying their house from them. Yeah. So it's, it's a completely different dynamic than the traditional homeowner that they would work with where on the market, they're just looking to get as much money as they possibly can get. That is not who we work with as wholesalers. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, man. hundred percent. So what does it look like now? Like is, is the wholesaling a, a big, like the biggest focus and then you're just buying them and flipping them and wholesaling them and just being entrepreneurial as you find opportunities? Yeah. So after, so 
throughout that journey of, of flipping and, and, and getting rentals and doing a little bit of wholesaling, um, made some massive, massive mistakes um, that cost me a lot, um, brought me to the point where I was um, nearly bankrupt, uh, almost had to declare bankruptcy. I mean, I was literally visiting with bankruptcy attorneys. Uh, we were selling everything straight out of our house, like side tables, chairs, lamps, sold my truck, emptied out my 401k, selling rental properties, like Wow. Not, not good. Yeah. If you, um, if you can dive into like what happened and what you learned, that'd be probably super yeah, valuable. Yeah. So, um, I really stupidly did two things at the same time. Uh, one took on a historic luxury flip, um, which it was a truly one of a kind building. Um, uh, so one of a kind is, you might think it's good. Actually, it's not good because running comps on it is near impossible. Um, so we had this, we had a, a group of people thinking it was all going to be worth this, this high number, like 1.2 million um, or 1.1, I think. And it was, the building was built in 1852. It was never a house. It was a schoolhouse. And then it was a Masonic temple for the Freemasons. And so we had to completely convert it to a single family residence. I mean, completely gutted the entire interior, rebuilt every, every floor, ceiling and wall. It was a historic building. So we had to adhere to very strict standards. Uh, like the exterior had to all look original. So the windows had to be real wood, original glass. There were 24 windows. Each one cost $3,000. Yeah. Wow. And you didn't, you didn't know this or you, uh, when you were going into it or <laughs> we did not know that all those had to be replaced. Wow. So yeah. Uh, and then, you know, there's, there's that one, there's like a $25,000 asbestos bill that we didn't expect. Um, just like major cost overruns, major time overruns. Um, at the same time doing that, I had started a construction business where we were going to be building new houses, um, building developments for ourselves to hold as rental properties. And while we were getting ready for that, we were doing some other jobs. Um, I had partnered with this guy who was not at all who I thought he was. Um, he was a phenomenal craftsman. But as far as a, a businessman and a, a crew leader, I mean, horrendous. And, and I was admittedly blinded by his skill as a craftsman because this guy could literally build anything. Uh, but he was bidding the jobs. He was managing the crews. He was doing all that stuff. And, you know, the turnover was ridiculous. The, everything was getting under bid and, and it was over budget and uh, it, it was just a nightmare. So all of this, these two companies were going on at the same time. We were, uh, you know, way over on cost on, on both, both sides. Uh, we were mid build on someone's lake house and we just ran out of money and couldn't, couldn't finish the job. Couldn't pay people, couldn't do anything. I had to close down that business surrender all the machinery like a big excavator and a material handler and like all this big stuff um and so like uh, we you know ended up selling the house but after multiple price drops of big chunks and uh at the end of it i mean i was like four hundred thousand dollars in debt um after that entire year not having earned anything either and i mean to say that to say that I was stressed is an understatement. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, man, so throughout that, I, I, I was pretty much done with real estate at that point. Uh, I, I was, it just wasn't worth it. It was too much stress, too much uncertainty, too much risk. I had, uh, uh, an infant. Uh, we had just gotten married not too long before. Uh, so not really the time where I wanted to be uh, going through a lot of risk and, and huge stress and everything. So, um, I decided to go back into the medical device space. 
because I just need to provide some stability for my family, some certainty, and I need to be making money too. Um, after not too long, after, you know, it was going really well, but after not too long, then COVID hit and everything just shut down. And so I said, all right, well, I can't just sit around and do nothing. Like I need to work my way through this. And so then I decided, I was looking at my options. I said, well, real estate, you know, I've made money before. It was good at some points, but flipping like contractors, the, the risk involved, like I can't do that right now. And, and admittedly, like I, I really dislike managing contractors. It is not a skill set of mine. Um, and man, and doing uh, rentals, like it wouldn't be quick enough. Like I just needed something quicker. And so I decided to look back into wholesaling. And I said, well, the margins were always really good and the risk is low, which I like, and it fits my profile. It's more of, it's a sales and marketing business at the end of the day. Um, but I need to do it differently because I didn't like it that much when I was doing it before. Yep. So then I decided, you know, get some coaching, really systematize it, make it a true business. Um, and once I decided to do that, it, it was a complete game changer for me. I mean, we, you know, started hiring people, um, delegating those things that either I was good at or didn't want to do. But after I had learned those roles, and that's where I see a lot of people making mistakes is they, they delegate stuff too soon before they even have any idea how to do it. And then they don't know how to train on it. They don't know how to teach it. They don't know how to manage it. So they're trying to give a task to someone else that they don't even really know how to do. And then having an employee ends up actually being more work than when they were just doing it themselves. So um, I made sure to, to have those systems and processes in place. And so I knew it all. And since then, I mean, we've grown pretty significantly. We're at, uh, well, we're, we're changing the structure of our company a little bit right now, but right now we're at eight people. Um, we're, we average around 10 wholesale deals a month. And um, so we're expanding into some different territories. Um, and I mean, it's, it's been a total game changer for me. It fits my profile a lot more. I don't have to deal with contractors. I don't have to deal with tenants or eviction moratoriums or, or anything like that. The risk is low. I have options. So yeah, if I, if we do some whole tails, like the, you know, quick flips. Um, so we'll do some of those on the ones where it makes sense. Um, but that's what, that's what that transition looks like. And that's where we are right now. That's cool, man. That's inspiring. Um, I'm proud of you for getting back up, <laughs> Thanks. getting after it, building it. And uh, now you seem like you got a lot of momentum moving forward. That's really cool. Uh, not a lot of people take the risk and then a lot of people also don't get back up. So good job. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool and very inspiring. So um, what are ways that like uh, you need help, like listeners or people are you looking for more cold callers, more wholesalers, new markets? Like what are things that you're trying to get after that maybe I or people listening could help out with? Yeah. So, you know, through that whole process, I, I really learned the value of other people. And, you know, I, I went through some really tough times uh, mentally, financially um, through that period of my life. And I got a lot of help from other people. I certainly didn't get out of it on my own. And so having other people help, it, it made me want to give back even more. And, you know, I still get a ton of help. I still have mentors and coaches and just colleagues that we just help each other. And so real estate for me has completely changed my life. I know it can change the lives of others as well. So, you know, what I love doing now, like, yeah, I have that business, but I also help to educate and empower people to change their lives through real estate investing. And I do that through uh, a coaching program that I have. And so, you know, the most of the people that we work with, they're in that phase where they are either working another full-time job and, and they want to get into real estate full-time 
or they're already in some aspect of real estate, like they're flipping or they're, they're landlords or they're an agent and they want to learn how to source deals directly for themselves so that they can just save that 15 to 20,000 on each time they buy or just have another way to find deals. So they're not relying on other wholesalers or on stuff on the market or whatever other source. So whether someone is looking to disposition it, so sell it to another investor or keep it for themselves, that part doesn't really matter so much. That's only one small part of wholesaling. In the end, like wholesaling is the art and science of finding off-market discounted deals. And so I really enjoy teaching people how to do that. Uh, and it, I mean, it gives me great satisfaction to help people to organize a true business and change their lives because, you know, the, the average person, I don't know, maybe they're making $50,000 a year or something like it's not that hard to replace that income with a few wholesale deals. You know, you, you're doing, you're doing one wholesale deal a month. And, and I mean, after all your marketing costs and everything, you're making way more at double more than double what you ever made in a W2 job that you probably hated. So, you know, I really like, and it gives me a ton of satisfaction to help people to make that leap. Uh, I'm a huge, huge fan of personal development and constantly improving myself and others. So we throw that in on every single week, just making sure that, you know, they're growing personally and professionally, because I, I think that if you don't have the mindset, then it doesn't matter what you have on the skill set, because business is tough. Like you, there's going to be issues. There's going to be problems. There's going to be points where you're struggling. And if you don't have that mindset to back it all up and keep you pushing forward, then it, none of it's really going to matter. And you're yep. just going to give up. Yep. Yeah. So, um, so I focus on all that stuff. I, I love that stuff. I love teaching. I love helping people get that first deal, scaling their business. Um, so best way, you know, if, if someone's looking to learn how to create a real sustainable, reliable business where you can source deals directly from homeowners, whether you're a flipper, landlord, agent, or you're looking to be a wholesaler, I would love to have that conversation and see if we're a fit. That's awesome, man. Very cool. Yeah anyone wants to reach out, what's the best way they can do that? Yeah. On Instagram at action, Dan, bro. Action, Dan, bro. Right on. Cool, man. Well, uh, is there anything else that you, uh, want to talk about or you, you see out in the market that you want to touch on, um, while we got you here? Yeah. I, you know, again, going back to one of those things we were talking about before about like getting really good at one thing is that, there's, there's so much information. There's so much noise out there. Like, honestly, it's, it's not a lack of information that causes people to hesitate right now. It's the, the weight of information. There's way too much information. And so people just, they see all these options, you know, they see investing in notes, they see creative finance, they see mobile home parks, they see self-storage, they see flipping and, and, and doing burr and doing wholesaling. Like they see all these options and they're all great. They're all great options. And that's what's tough is that they all make money. And, but what's, what forces people to hesitate is that they, they don't know which one to pick. Right. And, and they try to do too many things at once because everything sounds good. But when you have, you know, one hand in this, one hand in that, one foot in this one, one foot in the other one, like you're never able to fully dive in and get really good at any one thing. Mm -hmm. And, and one of my, one of my friends said this to me, he said, uh, the, the thing about distractions in real estate is that they make money. And that's the problem. Yeah. because so you can do all this other stuff and you'll make money doing it, but not nearly as much as you would if you just focused on one thing and got really good at it. Yeah. 
And so, you know, people just starting out, they, they see too many options and they want to do too many things and they, they want to get too creative too soon. And they think that, you know, they need to like put their personal spin on every little thing. And they don't even know how to do the basics of the business. And they're trying to be creative with it. Right. Like you're not supposed to be creative with it. When you first start out, you're yep. supposed to learn the basics. Yep. Like think about it like sports, like it, you learn how to, if it's basketball, like you learn how to dribble and you learn how to pass and you learn how to shoot a free throw and you're not learning how to do alley-oops and all these trick plays like that comes way, way down the road. But people are trying to do that in real estate on day one. That's cool. Yeah, you're right. That's that's a good way to put it. It's a good analogy. So, yeah. And so like people get caught up in all this fancy stuff when they don't even have the basics down. And so they, they're trying to build this business with a weak foundation. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it is a business and it should be a business. And so most people, they get into it without actually knowing how to run a business. And, and so like there are two sides to it. There's whatever niche you're in, maybe that's wholesaling. And then there's actually knowing how to run a business. And most people have never learned how to properly do either. And then they try to like scale it and they say, oh, I want to go to multiple states. Like, okay, well, let's, let's talk about your business first. Like, yeah. tell me about your numbers. And they, and they can't. And that's what scares me is that people are trying to do all these fancy things and all these big things because they see it on social media. They see these guys, you know, talking about how they just scaled nationwide and how they're doing 50 deals a month and all this stuff. Well, look behind the scenes. How much time have they actually spent into this? How many years have they been doing it? How many deals have they done before they got to that point? Like people try to do... The, the things that they see someone else doing who are light years ahead of where they are. But what they should really be doing is what that person did when they were at where they're at. So don't try to do, you know, if, if you're learning how to drive, you're not going to go out and, and learn how to drive like a Formula One race car driver. You're going to learn how to drive like a new driver. You know, you learn how to use your turn signal and the brakes and the gas, like, you don't need to learn how to drive 200 miles an hour. Yeah. So Great. getting those basics down, like that's where you got to start. I love it, man. That's super cool. I agree with you completely. Get the basics, build on top of it, then get creative. Yep. I love it, dude. Thank you so much. Um, well, I, I'd love to stay in touch with you. And uh, I'm sure you can teach us a lot as well. And um, just any way we can help, man, we're in. Um, best way, obviously, you said Instagram for people to reach out to you. And uh, unless there's anything else, man, just really appreciate your time. And let's go get back after it and go get some more deals. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and again, like I honestly, you know, I get people reaching out to me every single day, asking for help, asking questions. Like I love to help. It, yeah. it, it, it drives me more than doing a deal does uh, when I can help someone else doing a deal uh, and, and, you know, quit their day job. Like I've had students, they've been able to quit their jobs and go full-time in real estate. And they're making more than they ever did before. And they can go on these great vacations and, and like retire their parents or like whatever they want to do. Like this stuff is life-changing. Yep. And that is more fulfilling to me than like getting a nice check. So like, don't get me wrong. The money's great, but the, the giving back and helping others is the most fulfilling part. So if anyone who's listening, if, if I can help, please reach out. That's great, man. Yeah. That, I'm, I'm with you. Like I've never met anyone who went all in for a long period of time on real estate and it didn't change their life. Yeah. It, have your mistakes, get those $3,000 windows, but get right back up, baby. That's right. Yeah. I appreciate you, Dan, bro. You are the man. We'll stay in touch and I hope you have a great rest of the day. All right, man. Thanks for having me on.